so to go to Everest initially, I was going to have to just get creative for how I did it. Sponsorship wasn't really going to come to me. So I had to think a little bit more outside of that framework of how I was going to get the money in. So everything I came up with was quite, I suppose, entrepreneurial in many ways. And, you know, using kind of weird guerrilla marketing tactics to get the funds together. And I think if, if I'm to do that again, Christmas 2018. I knew that in 2019 I wanted to read a lot more than I did that year. So my wish was granted and my lovely family decided to chip in and get me a Kindle. What was I going to read on that Kindle? And when I went looking for certain books, one of them caught my attention. Mount Everest, it's not about the summit. See, I'm not a mountaineer, so I'm not quite sure what drew me to this book, but it had to be the inspirational value behind it. It's fair to say that I was hooked for the next 24 hours, reading every single word off the page. I literally couldn't put it down. It was a story of a man who had been on a journey his entire life to climb Everest. With everything that I was doing, I simply had to leave a review for this book. Lo and behold, the author actually answered the review and I couldn't resist sending a message. One thing led to another and I decided to go and see him. I was just like, did we just set up the <laughs> shot and then, and then literally not? Tom, if the dog starts taking chunks out of the door, we'll just walk <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. I don't like to do this whole kind of like, Oh, so what is your name? And tell us what you do and yeah. all of this, like, okay. that, you know, like, more we'll, informal. We'll, yeah, more informal. What you showed me in the book is the fact that you never stopped moving yeah. towards your goal. You never, you never gave up. But I think from, from a very early age, you showed that sign of like, I will get there. What was it in, when you, when you cycled? Oh, that's, yeah. how, that's how the book opens, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Literally, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that was my girlfriend at the time. I was going to go across to Cumbria to meet her, and I, I didn't have enough money for the train fare. So I thought, well, I'll just you know, ride across. And this was at the time when the coast to coast is now a popular thing to do. You know, a lot of people do that on a two or three day passage, um, but it had only just opened, so it wasn't that big a thing. So at the time, I just thought, what's the quickest and easiest way to get across to Seascale on the west coast? Let's just tear across the motorway. Yeah, literally. <laughs> on my friend's mountain bike, which I borrowed, um, which he didn't know anything about, <laughs> completely you know, trashed it on the way across. <laughs> and it took, you know, 13 hours now would be a, a phenomenal time for anybody doing the official coast to coast. Yeah. But I just, I just held the lever across the motorway. Yeah, yeah that's. I, 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 and it was a spur of the moment thing. It was just, I'll just. Yeah, I'll exactly, but you, you went, you went with your instinct. Didn't yeah. You? Your, your instinct was just like, right, I'm going to get there. I am going there. That's where I'm going to be. I can't get the train. <laughs> yeah. I've got a bike. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, you think outside of the box. You find yeah. a result to your problem. Yeah. You conquer your problem. I try to. I mean, I try to do it as best way I can. I mean, I think social media has helped me massively with that. It would have been very difficult for me to have gone off to Everest with these ideas and you know all this stuff that's floating around about how you're going to get yourself into a position to climb the mountain in the first place. How are you going to get the money to climb the mountain? And I, what helped me was was putting myself out there. So exposing myself to people from a point of view of this is who I am. This is my mindset. This, you know, I'm no different to you. I'm no different to you. I'm not a superhero. I'm not a top of the, top athlete. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just just a guy that's just got this burning passion that wants to see it through. And I have the perfect platform to do that. I have social media uh, to put exactly. those ideas out. Yeah. On this one here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's when the book when the book went to the top of the Amazon's mountaineering chart. Uh, we had that then just as a, a memento of that 
historic event, basically, <laughs> to see, you know, obviously the, the little humble book I wrote for that period of time was selling more than that was just fascinating to me. It was just, I just, it blew my mind completely. That's the coordinates, the latitude, longitude coordinates of where Everest is. And the one dream, one chance, one life is the philosophy that I was kind of living by in 2014 on my first journey to Everest. I remember that. I produced a range of clothing. Yeah. And on the clothing, that was the strap line, really. That, yeah. You know, I, I literally had that on pretty much everything I was selling. So T-shirts, hoodies, you know, you name it, vests. <laughs> and it was just something stupid, one because it was a dream, one chance, thinking there was only going to be one chance to, to achieve that. So this was actually given to me by a, a, g a good friend of mine when I was best man at his wedding. What are you doing? Oh, you cut your horn, do you? Oh, this is our lab Rebecca. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what she is. She's supposed to be a Labradoodle. But, um, yeah, very, very quirky little puppy. She comes with me on all my training where we go. So she's going to be one fit dog, that's for sure. <laughs> she loves nothing more than just running around the beach. Bless her. So then through in this room, I mean, this is kind of like the, the main office of the house where I conducted a lot of my campaigns to go to Everest, I guess, anyway. This is where I'd sit to <clears throat> come up with all the clothing designs that I came up with, all the branding. Um, you know, when I was writing off for uh, sponsorship, trying to come up with ideas to raise the money, everything kind of happened in here. Interestingly, I didn't write the book in here. <laughs> I didn't want to be in here to write the book because it was too, it's too much like cabin fever, so I needed to take myself out of that. Yeah, that was in 2001 when I went to the top of Akinkagua with Adventure Consultants. So if you can get to the top of Akinkagua, which is just short 7,000 metres, then there's a good chance you're going to perform well and you go over to the bigger peaks over the end of there. So that was, yeah, that was just a side by a guy after we came down off Akinkagua in 2001. He was on Everest in 2015 when the last time I spoke to him. So we were kind of both caught out in that, you know, stuck up on the mountain after the earthquake. So it was a bit bizarre, a bit surreal. You're probably wondering at this point why it's called It's Not About the Summit. Well, simply put, Ellis hasn't reached the summit. But this was of no fault of his own. In fact, he has not reached the summit because each time he has gone to climb this mountain, something horrendous has happened. Now, you could probably say, shouldn't you just be glad that you're alive? Oh yeah, definitely. And he should be grateful for that, as they were some of the most horrendous disasters in recent human history. However, you have to remember that if you want to climb Everest, you can't do it with a simple plane ticket and a couple of quid in your back pocket. No, climbing Everest costs you around £30,000 each time. So even though you've got to figure out how you're going to be able to climb this mountain and have the physical energy to do so and the fitness to do so, you also have to string the money together to be able to go. And this is exactly what Ellis did. But imagine going through all of that to get to the base of this mountain, to be told to go home. There were no refunds. There was no, that was it. You were done. Your entire dream crushed. So this happened to Ellis in 2014. In 2015, it happened again, but he was in the middle of it. Obviously, you know, and a bit afraid as well as to what was happening on the mountain. My initial reaction was, oh, I'm done with this now. You know, this is like second year, in, second a row, year in a row. Another 30 grand down the line. Yeah, I've, threw, I've chucked everything out this mountain. There's nothing more I can physically put out this mountain. And then for this to happen again, I'm just, yeah, it was an initial uh, an outcry of anger, I guess, in many ways. Grateful that I'm, I was still here, I was still there, but a uh, big amount of resentment, bitterness, and anger. It just all came out of one. You releasing that book shows it shows it wasn't over. Yeah. And I think you're exploring other ways to um, appreciate your love for the mountain. Made me the person I am now. It's you know <clears throat> it's connected me with people who I wouldn't have made, became friends with. Writing the book has helped other people, not just me. You know, the feedback that I've had off the book has been fantastic. None of that would have happened had I summited up this at the moment because I would I had no intention of writing a book. It's been very hard to walk away from it but 
equally, I've, I've not really wanted to because when I've shunned it out of my life, when I have said, I'm done with this mountain, I'm going to just not think about it for a while. The book's done now, I don't even want to think about that. I can't because people want let it go. You know, it, it, I think, it, would you say it's people who can't let it go? What would you say? Um, I think, no, I, I certainly don't let it go, but when I try to not let it go, it's it's the fact that when people read the book and then I get nice messages off anybody and then it rekindles it and you know it, it, it's something as simple as I was in a real dark place in my life um, uh, I read your book and it made me realize that you know god there's, there's so much more to life here and you know and I and the message that I take from that is I would love to see you go back you know you've inspired me so much and how amazing would it be for you to go and finish this journey <laughs> Some of the book was wrote in here. In fact, I took that, I wrote it on that Mac and I took it through into my daughter's bedroom. This is so used to stream through, so there's a lot of that in there. Mm. So, yeah, the bookshelf has predominantly got mountaineering books on it, including copies of my own. <laughs> some old copies of some of the attempts on Everest in the 50s, the 30s, some of the more modern stuff. And then mine's in there as well. <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. That was in my shoved in for good measure. Well, I think I mean it just shows that if you've got a a passion or a dedication in life, I mean it's you know it doesn't just come from nothing, does it? I think b being obsessed in life is is not a bad thing. I think to achieve anything in life, you have to have a level of obsession. I think if if it's not if you don't live and breathe something, I don't think it's possible to make it happen. I really don't. You know, I've, I mean, listen, I've tried the corporate lifestyle on a number of occasions, and I now know. I mean, I'm, I'm mid forties now. And it took me the best part of 30 years before I finally realized I'm not cut out for that. I'm meant to have, you know, to be this more of a kind of kindred free spirit. But I know who I am and I know what I am. And I know that for me to be in a nine to five, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, people can do that and that's absolutely fine. But I now know that that's not me and that's not how I need to live my life. It's because I think um, it's because you've done more exploring internally than externally i think so i think so i'm very yeah i mean it's it, yeah i think i'm quite i'm aware of who i am now um you know, once you can get into that space once you know who you are everything else is just drifts into place it does as you deal with these internal obstacles mm -hmm. that's how you move forward in, in, uh, externally you have to you've got to just put yourself out there you have to be not afraid of what people think um not be scared of judgments and just get yourself into a place where only you matter in a, in a way, in a selfish way, that, you know, as long as you and your own, your family, and everything's fine. Um, and then just don't worry. Just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Keep on that path and then and don't detract from that. And, mm. You know, that's the one piece of advice that I it could impart to anybody. I mean, it's easier said than done. I know that. But honestly, since I've been in this headspace of knowing who I am, knowing what I am, knowing what drives me, knowing what I don't like, I'm comfortable now, I accept it, and I accept who I am, and life has just been so much better since I've been in this space. Yeah. Whether I return to Everest or not is immaterial, you know, it's, I give it my best shot, nobody can ask any more of that, mm. you know. If I, if I know that I try to go back to this mountain, um, and for me, it, the book says it's not about the summit, and going back to Everest is kind of saying, is it about the summit? And it, it isn't, it's about, being truthful to myself and knowing what this means to me. It's about your journey. It's about my journey and having this attempt under my own steam, you know, with nothing detracting from that. So not getting onto the mountain and then having a comet slamming into the side of it in a freak event and nobody climbs the mountain. You know, it's about being there and getting pushing myself and pushing my limits to the point of testing myself against this passion that I've always had. I didn't have a, a publishing company uh, or an agency behind me telling me to go here or, you know, promoting the book, putting the book into bookshops. I've never, I've never had that. So I've always had to, to self-promote myself and, and I've done that through the power of social media. I've done it through going out doing talks and it's things that I've taken on board myself. So that, in a way, I guess the drive it was initially there to get to Everest. I've carried that through with the book. The book became another ex expedition in many ways because people told me it's going to be hard to write a book. You won't get published. You won't get the funding for a book. Nobody will want to read about not climbing Everest. So I quietened all that, shut all that down. And, and for the last two years, I've lived and breathed the book because I, I believed in it. You see, this story is not just about 
a man who's trying to climb a mountain. No, Ellis's story is about someone who's following their passion, their dream, the dream they've had ever since a young age. And whereas most people would decide to just give up and call it that exactly just a dream, he doesn't. He continues to pursue it every single day and has no matter what has been thrown his way. And so, even though it's not looking incredibly likely and 